Hi everyone and welcome to the Weekly Woo. Thank you for your patience as I took another break. Thank you for all your kind messages and your support. I love doing this and I'm happy to be back. So I wanted to do something really simple. This week we just finished coming out of a solar eclipse in Gemini. And so very apropos, as I wanted to just pick two cards, one animal and one plant ally, we got four, two and two. So I want to start with our animals this week. We got Wombat Spirit, which we've never actually gotten this one before. Its key words in this deck are be at home. Now, this is really a message about being at home in our own skin. The, the self-acceptance that you know surpasses all sorts of internal uh, perfectionism or criticisms that we've heard in the past. It's really about loving and accepting yourself with abandon just because you're on this planet and you're existing and you're getting this opportunity. It's, it's, it's like an invitation to fall madly in love with life, but also, you know, this role that you're playing, like who you are and everything you've been through to love it as deeply as possible. That means your mistakes, that means the traumas, that means the failures, the defeats, the frustrations. This is an invitation to love it all equally. You know, the good and the bad feelings, the good experiences and the negative experiences. Wombat says when you do this, you are then given access to a whole nother level of energy, of uh, intuition and inspiration to then really be embarking on your true purpose and really be channeling, you know, your, your highest vibrational ideas and manifesting and magnetizing the people who are truly in your soul family, those of like mind. So to be at home in one skin and look, this little critter, he's doing it or she's doing it. And that's the invitation we have that like, no matter how imperfect you may think you are, there is a order, a, a reason why those flaws, whatever you perceive as flaws exist. And part of them is to trigger and catalyze you into a deeper love and acceptance of self. Self then also being a part of all that is. So when you're loving yourself, when you're going to this, deep dive intimacy with self, you're actually, it's, you're, you're making love to all of it as well, because it's all in you as well. <laughs> Woo. All right. Well, Matt, thank you for that. That was a deep dive. Then we got Canary Spirit. She was backwards. Canary Spirit in this deck, its keywords are sing your own song. So this is a reminder that looking outside yourself for approval is really going to work against this directive. The, it caught, you know, Mars just went into Leo and we are moving into Leo season. And Leo is kind of the archetype of like the rock star, the actor, the, the front man. And th whenever the sun is moving through signs like this, we all get to really access that archetypal energy of whatever sign the sun is in. And as we're going to be moving into Leo with the planets moving, you know, Mars and Venus are all going to move into Leo. It's an invitation to turn this right side up and really start accessing like, who's your internal rock star? You know, think about those artists that are so prolific and so successful because there was an element of nothing is going to get in the way of me shining my light of me being my biggest, best self. You know, it's one of the reasons why when I was growing up, Madonna was such this icon for, at least for me and the girls around me as I was growing up, because there was this element of like, she just didn't give up F. And that energy, although when we lean too heavily on it, right, we abandon collaboration, which is key, both our collaboration with infinite spirit and our highest self, but also collaboration with everyone else, this family that we are here. But still like there, if you, 
if you haven't already thought about this archetype of like internal king, internal queen, the um, the performer that like gets on stage and just opens their heart, mouth, soul, and, and lets it roar. There's an element and a, and a way in your life right now, this week, where you are going to be able to access that. And like, I think the question is like, if this is all one big game, right? Life is a game, like you're the star of your version. You're the star of it. Are you acting like that? You know, you're top of the call sheet. You're the front man. Are you treating yourself like that? Are you giving yourself opportunities to relish in all the energy you have access to? This also gives us an invitation to sing. When we have a lot of this Gemini activation, which we do because we just got out of this solar eclipse, the power of our voice, right? The power of this energy center right here, when it's open and it's healed and it's whole and complete, to sing, to speak, right? Is so incredibly pleasurable. So this week there's a barometer. How comfortable do you feel singing? Are you making any kind of loud noises? And to work on your ability to hold space for yourself to experience that, to work on that. So that's like singing in the shower, singing outside, singing in the car, singing with your children. Um, let's move on to the plants because the plants then totally confirmed. We got yarrow, which is boundaries, right? So this goes into this idea of not letting other people dim, don't dim your light for other people, rather shine bright and let them rise up around you. And to let go of this insecurity of what people think about you and about maybe you're having different ideas than, than other people right now, or you're feeling, you know, you're having intuition and upgrades that are, are taking you in paths that maybe others around you aren't going to follow you on. Yarrow says it's time to say no. Yarrow is about boundaries, both psychic and physical, energetic and material. Yarrow is also an invitation to look at where you have been most wounded in your life and to take a real honest moral inventory around that. Being so clear as you go into that inquiry that our wounds are actually uh, like our most powerful tools when it comes to our true purpose and being in alignment with what we're really here to do the mission, so to speak. So to be intimate with those wounds, Yara asks us to do this because there's a quality of this plant, of the spirit of this plant that is incredibly strong, right? But it also allows a high level of intuition to take hold, like that opening idea of the open crown chakra, but you're rooted in the earth. And so you can really hold all of that incredible juicy energy. Yaro also asks the question, do you believe you are a healer? And how are you using your healing powers? Because each and every one of us are. And the more we get more access to that part of ourselves, the healer within, when we look at the pain and the wounds of the past, and this comes back to Wombat, Wombat saying all of it, needed to happen, all of it combines to give you the energy signature that you are, the frequency that you are, and you're needed here. So access and take hold of the strength that you have access to when you accept and love even the enemy, the ex, the trauma, right? The failure. How much can you love it? How much can you love those things that we would like to label and define as bad or negative in our lives? The more you love it, 
the more power you're going to have access to. And I'm, when I'm talking about power, I'm not talking about power over anything else. I'm talking about that indescribable, blissful, expansive feeling when you are truly connected, mind, body, and spirit within. So Yarrow says that maybe there's some people who would want to rain on your parade and you need to have some boundaries with them because your self-expression and the exercising of that self-expression is really what this summer is so much about. To really be in such alignment with self that you are sending out those crystal clear signals to the universe and to your brothers and sisters around you to be magnetizing that which your heart truly desires. And then pine. First, we go to the pineal gland, right? The pine cone, which is such a great symbol of our third eye and intuition. So there is massive upgrades happening for all of us when it comes to telepathy, uh, clairvoyance, clairaudience, our dream world. It's, it's really gonna just keep rising from what I can see. So <clears throat> what we have to do as it, we start expanding in these other realms that have been dormant is what the pine tree, right? To root down that strength into the earth, that solid, solid center. And we go back to Wombat. That solid center is created when we accept and love every single part of ourself and our past. Pine is also an invitation to stand strong in your own ideas. You may be thinking differently than the herd, but this, these outliers, these um, forerunners, it's like the most important part of society. And indeed, if you're watching videos like this and you're interested in spirituality and the topics that I'm talking about, you're definitely one of those people. Pine also comes into our life when we need to hear, you are strong enough, you have what it takes. And remember, more strength is available to you here, the more you accept and love who you are and what you've been through. So, I love this card, look at that, with the beautiful pine cone. So this week, you know, I, Yarrow is a very big part of my daily and weekly routine. I have some of it dried and I make tea when I'm feeling particularly thin skinned. And indeed coming out of these eclipses and you could be feeling very thin skinned. Yarrow is great to use the flower essence, the tea, tinctures, great herb to experiment with. Pine also as a flower essence is very important for when you're going through really big changes and you need to really access that internal strength. Pine is also a very masculine energy. So this says to us, you know, as we're moving into the um, summer solstice, which will be the 20th and the 21st, we move into this phase of like, the light has been growing, the light has been growing light, being typified as the yang, energy, right? Masculine energy. And I'm not really speaking about gender. This is about vibration because we all have these vibrations within us. There's an element of um, this masculine forward thrusting energy that we're going to be tapping into. And I feel like that's part of what we gain when we're accepting all parts of ourself. It's like, you think of like the sun and the, it's fire and it's heat and how it just envelops and touches all. It, it's kind of that energy that's coming through. But also back to this canary spirit and how it works with pine. Pine being like, I will stand tall and who I am as I sing my specific song. Or another way to say that is, as I transmit my personal, singular, unique frequency. So see where maybe you can put your back up against a pine tree this week and commune with the deva of that plant. I think that is gonna be really powerful. I know where I am here, there's a lot of pine trees and 
you know, also to think about if the, if meditating like this really works for you to have your, you know, back up against the pine tree, letting it support you, your spine straight. And then imagine like it's energy coming into this third eye chakra. It also activates pine trees, activate our sacral chakra, which is where our creative and sexual energy lies. So when we get pine, it's also an invitation to move deeply into our sexual and creative functioning. So all of this combined, in many ways, it's like there are there, there is energy that you're not accessing quite yet because you have to sing your song and you have to access your sexual energy and no shame around it. Sometimes pine can really help us, especially working with the flower essence when we have guilt and shame around, especially around that sacral chakra and our sexuality. And I think this week we're getting this invitation as we move into this, you know, summer solstice to be the beautiful sexual creature that you are and to really have some inquiry around how comfortable are you with your sexual energy? How comfortable are you with your manifest manifestation box, so to speak, like your voice and the word being how we create our reality sound being so important. So I feel like the energy centers this week that we're really going to be working with and maybe clearing around is the sacral center, right? The second chakra, the throat chakra, and the third eye. So however that resonates with you, um, it is a great week to clear those areas, to focus on those areas, to maybe like do some visualizations where you go into those areas in your mind's eye. Um, so I am still not accepting new clients, but there is a waiting list. And if you would like to go on that, you can email me at info at the um, And again, I want to encourage you guys to get some yarrow. Start working with this flower, especially the more empathetic and, and you know, in tuned you are, the more help you need to strengthen that auric field. And I feel like pine is really going to do that as well. So work with these plants this week, you guys. And Look, I mean, the canary has a crown. This is so Leo, this Mars and Leo energy. So another thing about Mars and Leo, um, hair, because Mars, you know, rule, uh, Leo rules hair. So like do maybe getting a new hairdo this week. And also Mars and Leo is a lot about dancing, you know, dancing as therapy, dancing as release. Um, dancing also with other people as intimacy and connection. So this ran a little bit longer than I expected. I hope you guys enjoy it and I'll speak to you next week. Bye.